Hello, Dr. Eric Salib, uh, sports medicine physician. I'm going to be discussing how to figure out how to determine your differential diagnosis when someone presents to you in your office. Now, this is going to be a very simplified talk, and it's going to be solely based on location of pain. Obviously, there are many other factors involved, but this is going to help us from a very simplified form. So first, I'm going to just draw a cartoon of a knee. So this is a front view of the knee. We're gonna talk about the femur, which is this bone up here. This is your thigh bone. We have the tibia, your shin bone. Down here on the outside of the knee, you have the fibula. And then right in the center, you have your patella, or also known as your kneecap. So just for orientation, this would be the inner side of the knee, kind of where your two knees touch. This would refer to the lateral or outer side of the knee. So when, you use the, when I use the term lateral, it's referring to out here, medial over here. Anterior would be around the kneecap or in the front of the kneecap. So this talk's just gonna solely be talking about medial knee pain. And the differential diagnosis involved in that. So let's look at the medial side of the knee. You basically have three simple structures along the medial side of the knee. Obviously this is not completely conclusive, sorry, not completely inclusive, but is a nice starting point to go. So first thing first, you have a ligament which helps you hold the femur to the tibia. This ligament is called the MCL, also known as the medial collateral ligament. This helps prevent the knee from collapsing in when it receives any type of stress from the outside of the knee, not causing the knee to open up. So it helps hold those two bones together. Typical story of someone that will have an injury to the MCL will be someone that gets they were running and they got hit from the outside of the knee and caused the knee to buckle in. Uh, sometimes they'll step in a pothole and feel the knee kind of buckle. Um, those are the two typical phenomena that, that cause this. Just to the inside of that MCL, there's a structure called the meniscus. And it's kind of almost like a kidney bean shaped structure. And that's a pad. It's a pad that sits between the femur and the tibia. You have one both on the medial side of the knee and you also have one on the lateral side of the knee. And those are bumpers. The typical type of story that someone will describe is getting, you know, bending down, feeling a pop. Usually it's also got some pivoting or twisting involved. They'll, they'll put their foot down as they make a quick pivot or turn, they'll feel a pop. This is very common. Uh, and, and we do see this. Now, one of the big differences between the MCL and the meniscus is that mechanism of injury. But traditionally, because the MCL is outside the joint, if it's a mild injury to this ligament, meaning it's not a complete rupture or a complete tear of the MCL, you will not get swelling inside the knee joint. You'll get, maybe get some swelling just on the medial side of the knee, but not inclusive inside the joint. If you injured the meniscus, usually you will get some swelling inside the joint. So that's one of the help differentiating things. So this is known as the medial meniscus. And then the third structure is a group of tendons which come together and coalesce right on the anterior medial aspect of the tibia, right in this area. And those are three tendons. The first tendon is coming from the back of the thigh, and that's called the semitendinosus. It's one of the hamstring tendons, which comes from behind the knee and comes and attaches right here. Semitendinosus.
The second tendon comes from inside along the growing. And as that one comes down, that one also follows a similar course in the attachment point. And we call that the gracilis. And then the third tendon starts on the outside of the hip, kind of up here, crosses over up higher, and then comes down and also comes and attaches right here. We call this one sartorius. These together, the sartorius, the semimembranosus, and the gracilis, as they all come down and attach together in this area, we call this the pes and serene. Now the pes and serene, remember, is made up of the semitendinosus, the gracilis, and the sartorius. Now just adjacent to these structures is a little cushion or pad. You can call it a sac. It's called a bursa. That bursa sits right adjacent to them. And a bursa, B-U-R-S-A, I'll put it out so you can see it. Bursa is a cushion. As all those tendons come in, it allows the tendons to glide and slide without issue. Now, how will someone get a problem with the bursa? They can get inflammation or swelling of the bursa. That's also known as bursitis. With bursitis, you'll get some swelling in this area, more on the shin bone, not from the actual knee joint itself. It will usually be related to some type of mild trauma, bump, hit, or anything, but it can be due to the tendons gliding over the bursa and causing it to get inflamed. So it can be both traumatic or it can be due to overuse or repetitive type of activity. Same thing with the pes and serene, but most commonly the pes and serene happens with overuse. So this is, again, just a simple overview of medial knee pain when someone presents to your office, helping yourself determine what you would consider to be your differential diagnosis.